athletes with the latent aorta, and when do we need to worry? So the first concept is flo Hyman effect. Unfortunately, she was a professional uh, volleyball player, and she died in 1986, and collapsing after a volleyball match when she was playing in Japan at the age of 32. Few lessons. Um, it took two postmortems to realize that this lady was suffering with Marfan syndrome. Therefore, it was poor recognition that that could be an option, and poor recognition that athletes could die with aortic dissection. However, her death helped other family members to have life-saving operations because we were subsequently identified as suffering with Marfan syndrome. It is then that we need to recognize that the aortic dissection is a silent killer. There is very often the first presentation. And for understanding that the thoracic aorta dilatation is a complex result of interaction between hemodynamics, the genetic backgrounds, and as well as other external factors like hypertension, we need all to remember that early diagnosis could lead to treatment, which is elective surgery. And just remember that there is a long subclinical time before we get our dissection. So what are the basic or current recommendations? The first thing is the awareness. Athletes also died suddenly with our dissection. The second thing is that we need to know, we need to recognize that we're going to put someone through increases of blood pressure surges, uh, increased CR stress, and we are affected with Marfan syndrome, or we have any other condition that leads to aortic dilatation. We might be putting them at risk of dissection rupture, or we might accelerate the aneurysm for foundation, uh, formation. And if we identify these cases, we need to follow them up. So the basis of the recommendations are on early diagnosis, and they need to um, advise us about prevention. Importantly, that there is little data, as all these documents are consensus level, level of evidence C. And importantly, that we need to survey our athletes. What are the facts? The fact is aerobic exercise will increase the blood pressure, depending to intensity. Especially weight lifting, it will increase if we lift more than 50% of our body weight, up to surges of over 100, over 300 millimeters of mercury of, uh, in a given time of the aorta. If we were going to do the diagnosis, what is normal? So, for the nomograms that they, we have to use in healthy populations, so this population that in theory without atherosclerosis, hypertension, we will see that if we, the aorta size depends on sex, on age, and on height mainly. But if you look at the numbers on the bottom of the slide, you will realize that the aorta through the lifetime in males and in females has got very discrete limits. They might increase over time, but you will see that for males, rarely goes over four centimeters, and for females, rarely is going to go on the midlife of 3.4, 3.6. So what happened in athletes? And what happened, this is a study done for Araceli Boraita with a large number of athletes of a mean age of 23 years old, where she looked for the differences of uh, the, all the parameters and all the dimensions of the heart according to the level of the sports. And she found that very rarely males will have an aorta over an aortic root or aortic dilatation at any level that can be seen with echocardiogram more than four centimeters, and very rarely women will have more than 3.4 at that age. Professor Pelicia earlier on had come to the same conclusion with a population that is very well balanced, males and females, over 2,000 uh, highly trained athletes. And this, is, this population is interesting because it's got a wider age range. 
And again, we come with similar numbers. So it will appear that athletes have got a very similar distribution of aortic size than the normal population, and very rarely we find individuals outside these limits. So that's the facts. So what happened with time? This is a study done by Sabia Gatti and the team where, again, a very large number of athletes, younger group, had been followed for a number of time. And this is interesting because we come back with the same sort of percentage of rarity. It's rare to find big aortas in athletes. And in healthy individuals, we also need to understand that not always when we find a large aorta might progress. So time might give you some answers. So when we think about our root dilatation and our athletes, we need to make a mental idea of what could be influencing your aorta root dilatation. So on one side, you need to understand very easy factors, tobacco, hypertension, atherosclerosis, predisposition associated to bicuspid aorta valve, your sex, your time, your age, what exercise you do, we understand now the parameters. What about size? So we have on the bottom of the slides from Pelicha a paper that there is, there is a very significant correlation between the size of your aorta and the size of your body to a limit, to a limit. So we will see that, we will see that even those over two meters height, they're gonna have most of the aortic dimensions and the four with very few over there. So I think that big people will have big aorta, but to a limit. It seems that the nature, you know, give us a size for the conduit or the blood vessels. So what about, what happened to all these players, basketball players, and they are the tallest? What can we do? with that. So we, there's a study where 90 players, uh, they underwent enhanced uh, physical evaluation, they were classified and they were scored according to the gain criteria, and four of them were found to have aortic root dilatation that they didn't know anything about it. They also underwent genetic testing and two of them were identified as harboring a mutation leading to Marfan syndrome. So they said, well, when you find dilated, actually do more investigations. So we go to the left side of the slide then. So we need to find why. What is this related to? In that case, we might need a specialized advice. We might need to consider that the aortic dilatation may be part of a syndromic aortopathy where we will have a well-defined monogenic disorder leading the aortic dilatation or being part of a non-syndromic thoracic syndrome where there might be a familiar predisposition, interesting enough, sometimes caused by the same time of mutations. We need to know that the most common arthropathy is the one that is associated, as Sabia told us, with the bicuspid aortic valve. And this is important because we need to do our homework before we go into advice or athletes. This is from the guidelines. So you need to know in what box your athletes with aortic dilatation fit. Has it got Marfan? You need to have this idea. But not only if you have Marfan, you need to know whether you have any orthopathy related to a genetic condition. And if you do, please follow them up. But actually, if you don't, if you have an aortic dilatation, please follow them up. If you have identified an athlete with a aortic dilatation or actually having Marfan, I'm afraid that there is there are severe a limitation of the type of sports they can do. More importantly, and just focus on the blue of these uh, labels, we need to know that we need to go and exclude aortic dilatation, including genetic testing. This is a specialist advice. This is already in the guidelines printed in 2015. So just remember, for those with aortic dilatation, we need exercise on its own in a healthy individual is not an excuse to say, well, your aorta is big because it's an athlete aorta. We need to make sure that we get correct evaluation leading to a definite diagnosis. And when you do it, and you don't get to a diagnosis, you still need to follow up. Thank you very much.